Hello, everyone, and thanks everyone that joined us. Till now, we will be starting the webinar in about uh, two, three minutes. So, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for attending the webinar today. Uh, today we have Sang on board, our manager in SolidCamp Singapore. And uh, Sang has more than 25 years experience in the CAD CAM field and also in sales. And he's going to share with us his knowledge about the CAM sales process. And although we know that SoitCom 2020 is one of the most powerful CAM software available, it's so important to understand every step of the sale process from prospecting to closing the deal. And you know, every time I talk with Sang, I enjoy hearing his sale techniques and enthusiasm when he sells SoitCom. So we decided it's about time that you'll also enjoy. So with that being said, uh, Sang, now I'll make you presenter so you can share your screen. Okay. One second. Okay, Sang, now you're the presenter and you should, yeah. Okay, now we see your screen, perfect, so. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Thank Such you. A warm reception. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, okay, good afternoon and good evening to some of you and uh, thank you for logging in. Uh, well, welcome to this uh, session, this uh, solid cam sharing session. Um, I call it a sharing session. A session because really it's um, I know that some of you are very experienced salespeople 
but I think that um, it's always good to be able to share with each other, um, you know, new things. Uh, so let me just start that. I think all of us uh, in sales or even uh, in business, we understand the sales cycle, right? So this is not new. This is uh, uh, something I learned when I was in Xerox. It's called a Spanko. So every time we ask the salespeople, have you Spanko the deal, you know? So <laughs> have you moved the... The, the the deal from suspect to prospect uh to you know to to negotiation and even to close right so uh before i start i'd like to say that um really uh i i always feel and tell my sales people that uh, uh i define selling as not selling and some people you know start to laugh at that and i then would share say there is actually an art in sharing, okay? Because, um, you know, uh, today people are quite different. The, the, the culture is different, the technology is different. So, um, so it's not what we say that is important, it's what the customers say that is important. So really today's session, we like to go into a little bit more detail. So let me just uh, go to the next slide. And, and we all know that in prospect, Thing. We, we need to really you know, find the prospect. We, tell, we, we are told that we have to go look for the prospect. We need to do our cold calling. We have to have discipline in calling and we have to make, make a number of calls, right? So this is very common if, when you are a salesperson, your sales manager will do, ask you to do that. Uh, but really, I think uh, uh, sometimes we are told in very broad, uh, prospect what to do but they don't tell you how to get it done yeah so today i hope to share but before that let's go through the cycle i think um getting the appointment is such a big deal right so the objective of uh, calling someone is not to sell the product but to get the appointment right and how do we get the appointment so our managers always tell us you know you, you need to, to build the credibility with the customer. You need to know your domain. You know, need to know their challenges. You need to have case studies to, 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 to share with them. Uh, you have to be customer centric and you need to know the business benefits. So they tell you in very broad terms, but how do you really get, in, when you get in front of the customer, what do you say? So hopefully today my sharing will Will give you a bit of light into how we can actually move from really baby steps how do we get there okay so i think uh, preparation is all um, in the game right uh, they always say if you plan if you fail to plan you plan to fail right so let's go on to the next slide and uh, so what we do is that we after we get the appointment we we go into the meeting right so a lot of times we are told okay do some homework, find out who the customer is, what's their mission, you know, go to their website, understand them, yeah, uh, understand their CBI, their, their critical business issue, you know, what's the domain critical issue you need to know. So these are very broad based, but it's very important because if you talk to someone and you do not know their business cycle, they won't talk to you, okay, they won't, they won't, they won't talk to you, they won't talk to you about technology in the first place right so i think what i'm going to share today is really the the bolts and nuts about prospecting meeting the customer convincing the customer and getting the deal okay so really it's um, the process is very clear right we need to get that the agreement we need to summarize we need to close okay so the next slide basically oops And then they will ask you, oh, you know, obviously, like Natalie say, how do you get the order? How do we ask for the order? You know, there are many techniques of, of closing, but really, you don't get here unless you've done your initial work. You never get here until you've done your initial steps properly. So it's a process where if you don't do something correct in front, it will bite you at the end. They will start negotiating with you. They will do many things with you, which you find typically that salesperson has. And so we want to minimize that by having some techniques going forward. Okay. 
Okay, let me share with you. Uh, is this blocking everybody? Okay. Yesterday's prospecting is all about, you know, when those days when we started selling cat cam, the customers were not so educated, you know, cat cam was so new to them, you know. And it was the age of industrialization when cat cam came into the market. The work was very centralized and, you know, everybody's just, uh, communication is always within the country, right? Uh, everybody was product solution focused. Okay, what solutions do you have? What products are you making, right? And we talk as salespeople, we talk about our products, we talk about our solutions, we talk about our services. We tell the customer what they need because a lot of times the customer didn't know that they, uh, there was technology like ours to help them. Yeah? And a lot of times we ask them what their issues are. You know, we ask them, what's your issue? But today is quite different, right? Today, if you... Today, we're talking about prospects being so well informed because of the internet and, and really about, actually the customer in my mind has always been informed about their own business. You can't, you, you, you can't possibly know more than them about their business, right? So telling them what their business is, is not what we are there for. But at the same time, we are talking about now the age of innovation. People are making better products, better processes. Okay, so innovation is not only about products, but processes. And if you understand, today's things are more globalized, more decentralized. You design in Singapore, you manufacture in China, you sell in Europe, you know. And of course, products are getting more complex. You look at the phone when it first came out, it looked like a water bottle, right? It's a big thing. Today is so flat, so complex, multifunction, very complex. But with globalization, there's always increased competition. So what happens, there is a margin squeeze. And because things are so complex and product life cycles are so short, you know, uh, meaning last time when you buy a phone, you had to wait another 12 months to get a new phone. Today, every three months, there's a new phone. So the, 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 the pressure on delivering on time and quickly, is, it comes down all the way to our customers. Okay, and today prospecting, we are not, we are no more focusing on product, or we're not focusing on our technology, even we're talking about the customer, we are business focused. So prospecting is very different today. Okay. I think before, okay, maybe I should touch this first before I go to the rest. So just to follow the trend of thought. So when we talk about prospecting and, you know, uh, so why would, first we, we look at the why, right? As I was explaining, there's a pressure on price. So when you talk about business, it's always the, the pressure on price, okay? The customer has a pressure on price. The, the other customers are asking for better price every quarter, every year they are expecting better price, faster time to market, they, ex they expect quality because if you don't give them quality, you get disqualified, you know? And then obviously there is that P minus C equals M, price minus cost equals your margin, right? And, and why do the customers need us to come and talk to them? Because of this. They have price pressure, their cost is either going up or, or, or you know, they're trying to reduce their cost and their margin gets squeezed in between. So we are here to tell them we have a, a faster, cheaper, a better way. That's why we are prospecting. That's, that's our why in terms of why we are doing it, right? So a lot of people tell you, yeah, you need to prospect, but how do you prospect? Do you prospect based on bolts and nuts as you, we go there and talk about our technology? You know, oh, we have this technology, we have eye machining with, I think we need to be able to translate, translate bolts and nuts to dollars and cents. Because dollars and cents is what is in the businessman's mind. You talk to him about technology, is he he has he has very little patience with you because he's always thinking about dollars and cents, right? So really, it's all about the customer goals and not ours. So we need to think about why the customer wants to see us and why would he want to see us, okay? 
if we talk about technology, he will probably say that I already have technology, why should I see you? But if you talk about their goals, you share with them how other people have benefited, then they may realize that, okay, that's something that I want to know also. Okay, so getting to the door is so important. So you don't call up and talk about your technology first. You talk about them, talk about the domain. Okay, talk about the critical business in their domain, the quality issues that they have, the time to market pressures that they have, the increased cost in tooling, right? And how do you make a process faster in terms of innovation? So what do we do? How do we how do we convince him? We convince him by sharing it with him, our wins, how our customers have benefited. And on that basis, he would then say, yeah, perhaps I should see you, okay? Because many times when we have to travel hours and hours to see a customer, and when we get there, they make us wait for an hour. And after that, they tell us, oh, sorry, I have only five minutes for you. They do that is because they do not know the reason why they are seeing you. So if you give them a good reason to see you, they can't wait for you to get there because they know you're going to bring them a business solution. Okay. So about the calls, we will talk about that because a, a salesperson who doesn't make calls is really like a farmer who doesn't want to get up to, to plow and to water. So no excuses. We need to make our calls. Yeah. So let's talk about the what. Now we come back to how do we share and what, what we share with them when we get there because they are ready to hear how we're going to help them. And we talk about our technology, being able to really giving them the TTM, which is the time to market yeah, uh, uh, goals, the RTM, which is the right to market, meaning you deliver fast and high quality and how our software and our technology helps them to reduce their cost. Yeah, improve their process in terms of innovation. And very importantly, we are the only technology that is knowledge based. So, what does knowledge base mean? Knowledge base gives the customer really a, a really a, a, you know a, a advantage that nobody else can give him. Okay? Because many times our customer he's worried about technology retention, right? Because technology retention is one of the key factors of you know, staying in, 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 in on the top position, staying, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, keeping the technology in the company, right? So without the KB, the knowledge-based technology that we deliver, many customers, our customers lose their advantages when people leave, when people retire. Yeah? And at the same time, because some of them don't even have the right people, the overall standard of the workshop is very low. Okay, and I'll share with you some of the wins that we have, which the customers shared with us, why they love our technology. They don't love our technology only because we deliver on time, right to market, reduce the cost. In many cases, we provide an edge to them that they can never get anywhere else. Okay, so I think importantly, yeah. So importantly, this is something that is that is uh, uh, in the tops of the mind of the people. So I'll I'll share all those case studies a bit uh, later. But the famous things that we as salespeople, uh, you know, are afraid of a lot of times are objections. You know, I have salespeople when I I I, I see them in the office and they are so you know, so down and ask them, what's your problem? We say, oh, I have a problem. My customer uh, has a lot of objection. I say, well, if the customer has no objections, you have no sales, right? But then objections come in many forms, okay? There are objections that look like objections, but they're actually conditions. You know, a condition is something that is, well, it's like they, they have, they have, they're going bankrupt. They have no money. This person you're talking to is too young or he can't make the decision. That's a condition, okay? 
But then there's also another aspect that is looks like an objection, but it's not, it's an excuse. You know, when you tell him that you want to help him, he says, no, I don't need to. I, I don't need your help. It's just like if you're a sales girl and someone comes into your showroom to buy something and you go up to the person and say, can I help you? He says, no, I'm just browsing. An excuse is does not give you a reason to, to uh, answer the objection. It's not an objection, it's an excuse, not looking for an answer. So an objection is an objection, an objection is looking for an answer, okay? So I would say that an objection is good because a lot of times we learn in sales that objections are signposts to a sales because there is a saying that he that objects means to buy, right? If you don't object, that means you have no interest, okay? So when your customer starts to object, you get excited because they want to buy, they are ready to buy. Okay, so what kind of objections do you have? You know, uh, a lot of times, um, you know, many of our salespeople have are very worried when the customer talks about price. Okay, so how do you defend your price? I would say you should defend your price from day one, not at the end. If you build enough value up front, then your price becomes acceptable, right? So if you were to, if I were to pick up a pen and tell you that the pen costs a thousand dollars, you'll be shocked. You say, how can a pen cost a thousand dollars? But if I were to be able to stack up the, the benefits of the pen and to tell you that actually there are only two of this pen in the world. One of them is, a, is in the museum, the other, and these two pens are made by Michelangelo. Then the pen becomes very inexpensive. So price is very subjective, right? Price is extremely subjective, okay? Function. Some people may say, you don't have this function, I don't have, the, you don't have this function, you know? When people start to talk about functions, it's because you have been talking, you've been selling functions and not selling business benefits. Because if you sell business benefits, I don't care what software they have. If they have a problem, they are looking for a solution. If they have master cam and they still have a problem with tooling, they need a solution. If they have UG and they have a problem, they're taking too long to rough, they have a problem, they need a solution. So it's not about functionality, it's about business issues. And not just business issues, but critical business issues, okay? Some people might say, well, you know, my team is a, you know, my team is a very resistant to change. They are very happy with Mastercam, you know, or they are very used to UG. Then I would say that really, you are really not, you are talking at the interface level, which I think it's not about it's not about user ability. It's about do you want to stay in business, right? So when you hear the resistance that you have, you also have to examine the way you've been selling. Okay, and some people will say, "Well, if it's not broken, why change?" And if I hear this, I would know that I'm not I failed in convincing him that he needs to he has a problem that needs to be fixed it, i give you the analogy if you have a toothache what do you do you pay money to get more pain to relieve the pain true then that's what you need to highlight the pain so even if someone doesn't know he have a pain and you make him realize that he has a pain he will want to solve it okay which comes to the last item which is sometimes you hear this the classic thing, no budget. The sales people tells you, uh, the customer says to you, so no budget. No budget is because there's no reason to give you a budget. If there's a reason to, to, to look at your product, then I would say he will take budget from anywhere else to put into your solution because here we are not talking about only return on investment, you know? It's not that, if I, if I uh, uh, invest $1,000, I get $10 back. Oh, I'm very happy. It's not just the return. It is also a return on capital employed, meaning 
should I put my $100 with you or with Master Cam? If I put it with Master Cam, I get $1 back. But if I were put it with you, I get $10 back. Your return on capital employed is 10 times bigger than Master Cam. And that's where I'm going to put my budget. So budget is really very, very dependent on how you've been selling. Okay, so if you are same old, same old, you're the same at Master Cam, then obviously budget becomes, no, I don't have budget for you, you know, right? So let's go to the next one. I'll give you some example of, I, I think that's where, when you come to negotiation, I mean, you, you, if you have not stacked up all the reasons, then negotiation becomes tougher. But in any situation, there will always want, everybody wants a good deal. So they start to negotiate with you. So, but understand that negotiation is a strategy, okay? It's not personal, so don't take it personally, all right? Some people will use the friendly way of negotiating with you. He says, well, Sung, I like the way you, uh, you seem to be very knowledgeable. I think we can do business, but really, you know, you need to give me a better price. Or they could be very, very rough. They play rough with you. You say, hey, Sung, I know your solution is not really that fantastic. So take it or leave it. So see it as a, a strategy and don't get personal, don't, don't get flustered and just have a strategy early in your mind. So, so preparation is very important in, in negotiation because if you go into a deal not knowing where you are, then you will, you will surely be leaving too much on the table. Okay. So understand where your value is. If your value is high, then you should not be giving a better price. So it's just like, uh, I don't want to sell eye machining because eye machining adds on to the price. And I'm so worried that, uh, you know, then the customers won't buy. But it's just like, you know, Mercedes is a Mercedes. A Mercedes costs very much more than most cars, right? But why do we will pay for Mercedes? In fact, I, I, I had this analogies from one of my resellers who is so wise who say that he tells his customer, do you know that if you buy a solution, you will, you will save, uh, you get to buy a Mercedes every year because that's how much I'm going to save you. Okay. So price is very subjective. Negotiation is where it depends on your power base. You know, how much power you have in negotiation. If you have no power, obviously you have to give a good price. But let me tell you, the worst customer is the customer that got the best price from you. You know why? Because they were sold on price, not on value. Okay? So be, remember that, salespeople, we have to remember that. Okay, let's let's go into some case studies. I mean, case studies are good because they really, you know, I have this customer who who is a really one of the one of the biggest uh, automation companies in Singapore. Yeah. He makes a uh, a lot of parts and let me tell you this customer you know when i first went to him he has three master cam right he's got uh, quite a number of machines these people really very reluctant to 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 change when i was there the you know the users were like you know not very happy to be even in the meeting right and and they were they were cutting aluminium and and stainless steel I would say 60% aluminum and 40% stainless steel. Yeah. But let me say that why we were able to help them was because they had, I went to see, I chose to see the boss, the section head. Because I know that if I see users, sometimes users have other agendas. The users may be reluctant to change. They may be, um, you know, they are afraid to lose their seniority. I mean, if I'm a fantastic master cam users, I don't want someone to come in and sell me solid cam, right? I have to relearn. So I'm resistant. So I tell you, no need. So salespeople will say, oh, they already have and they don't need it. They don't want it, you know. But if you were to go to the HOD, the head of department, any head of department will have their key performance index given to them. To them. The bosses or the board may tell them, Hey, I, you need to reduce your cost, you know, because we are having a pressure on giving lower price. We need to be more productive. 
So here, he's one person who has master cam, using it for many years. His users are very happy, but he's unhappy. He has a KPI that says, I need my tooling cost is too high. I need to have more productivity. So here I, 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 I called him and said, you know, uh, I shared with him what we have done for other customers, right? And I shared with him really about tooling costs. I said, I can, you know, we, we, I know you cut aluminum, but when you cut to stainless steel, what happens to your tools? It wears so fast uh, that, you know, it's so costly. And true enough, his cost per month was about 10,000. And I told him, I said, I can easily save you 30 to 70%. You know, just, just look at the, what we have done for other people. And he said, you know, Seng, if you can cut my cost by 50%, it's enough for me to buy your software. And so what I did was because his users were all there, I didn't say, I'm going to replace all your master cam because that's a very dangerous thing to say to any user. And even to the boss, right? Because the boss may have decided to buy a master can and you're telling him that his, his, his past decisions were wrong. I don't think it's the right thing to say. You want to be able to say, well, fantastic. You have master can is good. Let us compliment you with a technology that can give you this upside, you know, this, this advantages. So the resistance drops suddenly. The users tend to look at it as, oh, okay, I've got another new technology to learn. I will become more user, you, you, I will become more valuable to my customers or to my employers. Okay. So addressing the KPI is so important. So on that basis, we talk about the strategy was actually to complement rather than replace. And because of the test cut, well, they bought our software. Yeah. Next, we have one of the biggest aerospace uh, subcontractor in Singapore. I, you, they have a, a more than a, almost 200 square meter uh, square feet. Yeah. Yeah, 200 square. Yeah, about 100 square meters actually. Yeah. Scenario here. They had they are very big users of Siemens, right? NX. Yeah. But they were open to technology. And why were they open? Because they cut very hard material. Titanium, stainless steel, in Cornell. They cut well, six, seven series aluminum. And when they were cutting in Cornell with UG, they were having such high wear to wear. They were, they were shocked that you know they were spending, they were using very good Gurin tools. They, the Gurin tools are uh, about a $500 sing a, a tool and they were wearing it out every 25 minutes they were wearing out their tools so they they were having a big big uh, headache right and uh, when it comes to roughing some of their parts the landing gears are more than two meters long so they were taking so long and they were just saying that you know and obviously NX the ownership and the subscription is much higher than ours that that's one of the consideration but at the same time, we also understand they were moving from two to five axes to Milton, and really UG is not that strong in that area. Okay, so we know. So what did we do? We shared the idea of tough material. We can do faster, deeper, with lower loads. We showed them with the same tool, we could cut three pieces. After one hour, the same tool was still sharp, whereas they would have changed six tools. Okay. And for aluminum, we told them, you know, you look at your aluminum parts, when we cut it, the warpage will be minimum. Why? Because we remove the material so fast, the heat is not transferred. And aluminum is very sensitive to heat. It will retain the heat and you will warp. Imagine cutting a piece of two meters, beautiful. When you put it on our table, you have to throw it away. That's the thing, right? And of course, the strength of solid cam in terms of multi-axis and our cost effectiveness is there, okay? And really, we talk about testing with with uh, with it, uh, the in Cornell. You look at this this part. We just did a sample part. Okay. Sixty eight minutes, thirty eight three pieces continuous. They were wearing the tools out in fifteen minutes. You look at the tool. The tool is completely sharp even after one hour. Yeah. Same machine, same part, same tool. Okay. So what does it show? It shows that really we are, we, without doubt, superior technology. 
Yeah. This is a is a well known case. This is a, a very big American company. Okay. Uh, they had they had, they are they are so very big UG users. Okay. But here is not that they can't just change because in some cases where they are making they are they are they're sort of locked in into UG. You can't replace them. So what do you do? We go there and we talked about. Well, I know you know you're using UG. You know uh, we are we are superior in removal. Uh, you know material removal, and they were very experienced, very high high tool. You know low productivity. Their machine utilization. They had very old machines, 15 years, uh, no 10, 15 years old machine. Some quality issues. The quality standard of their their users were you know varying throughout the the, the shop floor. So what happened is that we convinced them to do a test cut, okay? And uh, yeah, our our yeah. So our our strategy was, was just go there and share with them time to market, knowledge base, okay? Time to market is obvious. We're going to be very much faster. So we did a test cut for them. They were blown away. But more importantly, because there's a knowledge base system, they were so convinced because. After I show you the the result, some of the result that we took, we, we actually did a study on our own. Okay, this was a we just took a, a, a part just to rough. Uh, and this was not the finished part, just for roughing. And they were taking 40 minutes to rough this part. And we took nine minutes to rough this part. They used two cutters per part. We do we took we used one cutter for two parts. So really, in, in an eight-hour shift, they were making only 10 parts and we were making 24 parts, right? And if you look at the local cost, uh, they were, the ROI per month is only, you know, you look at the, the numbers, is staggering, right? So, but do you know that what the customer said to us? He said, we love your speed. We love the extended tool life, but let me tell you what we love the most. You have been able to help us improve our workshop standard. And it's sustainable because it's knowledge based. That was a customer's feedback. And you know that on the spot after the test cut, two orders. Fantastic. Do you know today, how many do they have? They have something like 26 licenses in ASM, in China and in, in Malaysia. Okay. So I would say that. Uh, I don't know whether my time is almost up. I think it's almost up. No, not yet. Yeah. So here again, I would say that uh, maybe if you have questions, I would like you to, you know, put in the chat box so that we can perhaps answer some of the questions, you know. But really, in summary, I would say that, you know, um, uh, I think before I reach here, because they're talking about this thing, I want to talk, I want to share one slide with salespeople. I think it's very crucial. Sorry. I hope you can see this. Okay. You know, when people tell you to make calls and then you are wondering why you should make so many calls, I think you need as a salesperson to understand your sales ratio okay so in a best practice scenario we need to make calls and 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 how many calls do we really need to make so we actually begin with the end in mind right so imagine if we want to have a uh say three deals three deals uh a, a, a month right and we know that we need to have really very good uh, leads in the funnel, three of them. So our ratio for creating a good lead, a good opportunity, we need three good opportunities to get one deal. Okay. And to get the, the, the appointments into a lead, to become a lead, we need five to one. So really, and our call ratio to, to make a call to get an appointment is seven to one. These are all best ratios, right? So really, if our sales target is three, so we just multiply, right? So I need three times three. I need nine A's. I need nine good leads, uh, opportunities in my funnel. How do I get the appointments? 
how do I get nine? I need to have 45 appointments, right? Which is 12 appointments per week. But how do I get appointments? To get 45 appointments, I need to, my ratio is seven to one. So I need to make 315 calls. Oh, sounds like an impossible task, but if you were to divide it to per day, it's only 16 calls per day. We're talking about 20 day week, eh? 16 calls per day only. And if you take two minutes to make a call, it's less than an hour. Okay, so there's no excuse not to make calls. Because I say two minutes, because if you talk more than two minutes, I think you're selling over the phone, right? You should be selling the appointment, not the product. You sell the appointment and you get the appointment, then you go there and convince him with more stories, yeah? So this ratio is extremely important to salespeople. You have to understand your sales ratio, okay? The, the better you are, the smaller your ratio. When you're a new salesperson, your ratio may be bigger. So you need to make more calls. But as you make more calls and your, if your sales manager tells you how to share, you know, be customer centric, be business centric, share the business benefits to get the appointment, not share the technology, you know, because if you share the technology, people may say, I already have, they have no more chance to sell. But if you were to share, do you need to lower your cost? He cannot say, I already have. He can say yes or no, right? So when you share about cost advantages, time to market, quality, knowledge-based system, he can either say yes or no. And if he says yes, then he needs to see you. That's all. And then you've got your work done for you already. So no need to sell your tool, your product, sell your benefits first, the business benefits, not the bolts and nuts, but the dollars and cents. Okay. So let's go to let's go to the last slide and uh, previous slide. Okay. So I would say that you know before I finish, I would say that you know let's start to share rather than to sell. Okay. Because if we try to sell our products people are not going to buy it they, they, we need to share with them what they need to hear what they want to hear so let's also start to to use the word complement rather than replace because replacing is a quite a dirty word because the person who decided to buy doesn't want to slap in the face right by you so you had to be subtle you go into the complement and then later replace okay but the first word is to go in and complement. We are here to complement what you have, okay? Again, customer-centric, not product-centric, not technology-centric, customer-centric, okay? Right. And really, if you are able to understand your domain and learn your domain a little bit, your knowledge will project your credibility and then people will want to talk to you. Right? People want to listen to you because you are speaking in the same language. We are talking about short floor languages. Okay. And really, if you want to get 36 new customers per year, you just need to make 16 cold calls. Cold calls means answered cold calls. Right? Not, not, I'm not in that counter as one no. 16 contact calls gives you 36 new customers per year. Natalie, can you hear me? Do you want to take over? Yes. Uh, thank you, Thang. Thank you. This was very interesting. And actually, I have uh, one question. Mm. Uh, people are asking, is price the most important factor in sales? Okay. <laughs> That's a very good question because price is always important. Yeah. But price is very subjective yeah a lot of times we pay for what we get yeah but sometimes we don't know what what we are getting so it's our duty as salespeople to show the the returns on the investment okay so if you can show like what i showed in the in the in the, in the slides on the kind of returns you can get imagine making 2006 versus uh 40,000. I mean, that is like amazing savings, right? So what are we talking about? 
even if I'm double the price of Mastercam, so what? Yeah. If I can save, I can. If you buy a Mercedes and I can help you save to get a Mercedes every year, you think the Mercedes is going to be expensive? No, it's not. Okay. So we focus on the business, not the technology. Because when we finish, uh, uh, we, 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 we focus on the business and we talk about savings, time to market, right to market, the competitive age, the raising of the total standard of the workshop, the knowledge retention in the company. You know how much is that worth? Many times the cost of our software. So price is becomes subjective. Okay. And like really, I mean, I'm a salesperson, right? If I can sell a million dollars, I'd rather sell a million dollars than a hundred thousand dollars because I'm going to make more profit. I'm going to make more margins. So you should not be afraid of price, right? As long as you have a reason to justify the price, the price is right. Does that help to answer? I hope it helps. A little yeah, bit. That, that's <laughs> a great answer. Now we ha I have another question. Um, someone asks, how do I compete against Mastercam if for, for a, I mean, not to replace Mastercam, is a, I compete against them for a new sale? Okay. Actually, there are two scenarios, right? One is you are the, the customer doesn't have any solution and he's just comparing you, you and you are comparing with them Mastercam. So, and you know that Mastercam is going to be cheaper than you because they don't have iMachining, right? And if you try to strip out iMachining and sell at the same price at Mastercam, then you're playing it you're playing on their rules. I'll give an example. If you play golf with Tiger Woods, can you beat Tiger Woods on golf? You can't. You must change the game, the rules of the game. So instead of concentrating on price, you should concentrate on what you can deliver that Mastercam can never deliver. And on that basis, when the customer says, yes, that's, that's what I want, then price becomes insignificant. That's what they want. You know, right? So, but if you were to sell to a customer who is already at Mastercam, just like, you know, new tech, they were very happy with Mastercam. And I, let me tell you, I would always say this, when I call a customer, I says, oh, I understand you're doing all this and I'm sure you're using a software. He says, yeah, 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 we're using Mastercam. You know what I would say? I would say, oh, that's a good software. Yeah, and, uh, but I understand you also cut a lot of stainless steel. And do you have, you know, uh, do you have a lot of tool wear when you're cutting a uh, stainless steel? You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we every 25 minutes we have to change our tools. Yeah, I say precisely. I think there are some technologies. They are they look the same, but they are not the same. Why? Because some technologies can do better, and that's where we come in, right? We can complement your master cam. We can we can uh, you know uh, 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 help you in this area, and you can still use your master cam. But let me tell you what happened in most of our customers. They will put Mastercam aside after one year and they will start replacing everyone with SolidCam, with iMachining. Eh? Because if you sell SolidCam without iMachining, you're not selling SolidCam because SolidCam is iMachining. Okay? So if someone comes to me and says, you know, I'm a very good, uh, you know, I sell a lot of Mastercam. I say, how many iMachining do you sell? Because that is, that is our unique selling proposition. And if you want to make money and you have a unique selling proposition, why are you short selling yourself? Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, if any software, if he has a CBI, he still has a CBI. That means if he has a business issue, critical business issue, whatever the software, even if he has Mastercam, Hypermill, whatever, he still needs to solve it and we are the one who will solve it for him. And therefore he will buy our software, even though he has got other softwares. So it's not about uh, actually competing with Mastercam alone, it's also competing with any other cam. Does that help? Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have one more. 
um, interesting question. At what point in the sales process do you decide what price to offer the client? Okay, all right, that's a, that's also a good one. I think uh, I will now, you know, um, when I first came into sales, my one of the first technique that I was taught is that never talk about price right in front. Always try to sell before you 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 talk about price. So you know you, if if the customers ask you what's the price, you should try to pretend that you didn't hear it and continue selling. <laughs> that was what I was taught, right? Why? Because if you stack enough reasons why how you can solve their issues, then they will talk about, they will talk about, yeah, I want to solve the issue. They will not ask you how much. They will say, you mean you can save me this amount? Because in the minds of the person, when you talk about time to market, right to market, cost and innovation, it is the money bank, the, the, the cash register in his head goes clinking, clinking, you know, and he's already calculating, shit, I'm going to save a hundred thousand every year and i buy this software i don't care what how much it is because you're going to save me so much it can't be so much and even if if it's a hundred thousand i'm selling him at a hundred thousand he he gets just has to pay for the software within one year and the next five years he's going to make five hundred thousand by saving it so you know when do you talk about price it's only when you have really built up all your uh, you know, the reasons for him to buy, right? So that's why I say, don't talk about bolts and nuts, talk about dollars and cents. Why? Because the dollar and cents just nullifies the price. You know, the customer will say, when, when can you deliver it to me rather than how much? Because really it's, and a lot of times it's, I don't have never had a problem with the fact that I put in eye machining, I can tell you, I never have. Why? Because without eye machining, I can, it's just like a salesperson, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you sell a car and the guy says, uh, can I have a better price? You say, do you mean you don't want the air conditioning? He says, no, 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 I want it. You don't want the tires? No, no, I want it. Do you want the engine? Yes, yes, yes. That, that's the price, you know, because a lot of times this is what they want and therefore they will pay it, right? But if you don't know, they don't know what they're paying for, they, everything is expensive, isn't it? Everything is expensive. So price is very, very subjective. So when do you talk about price? You talk about price whenever he says, I will buy on that basis. Just like uh, this customer who was saving on tools, I don't even have to talk about any other things. He just said, if you can save me this amount of tools, sir, uh, sir I'm gonna buy two sets now. Okay, just like ASM, after cutting it, the, the part, he looks at it, he says, wow, you're cutting it at nine minutes compared to my 40 minutes. He took the tool out of the, the holder. He took a picture because he couldn't believe it was so sharp. He went upstairs, he came down from his VP. He says, here's two orders. But later on, he found out that his overall standard of his workshop went up so high. That's why they started to buy two. And then China bought something like 10. And then Malaysia bought another two, and now China has almost more than 20 sets. Okay. They are, they are competing among themselves within the in between the company, seeing who can 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 save more and be faster, you know. So I would say that don't talk about price if you unless you have sold the reason for buying it. So it's not about features, it's not about technology, it's about business meeting their business goals their challenges okay because they are in business to make money they're in business to stay ahead their business their business to even survive but our technology helps them even improve their price give them open up new markets to them a lot of people tell me hey i don't cut in cornell because first i don't know how to cut in cornell i think i my machines are too old too low talks to to, to cut in Kona, I tell them, let me show it to you. I don't need high talk. I don't need new machine. You do not know how to do it. I machine will help you because we are knowledge based. 
Okay, so imagine if you were to say share this thing to your customers, you think price will be a big issue? Yeah, I mean, they, they will ask you, hey, can you give me a better price? I said, okay, uh, okay, I'll give you extra training. You know, uh, can you give me a better price? Why do you ask for a better price when you are going to save so much? I mean, compared to what I'm selling you, uh, hey, you know, then you will say, yeah, their resistance is going to be very low because the, the amount of benefit is so high, they are embarrassed to even ask for a price. Let me tell you. Agree? I don't know. <laughs> uh, thank you, useful? Sam. Yeah, very yeah. useful. I think that was a very uh, good answer. And you explained it very well. Um, I think our time is about to be up. Uh, there is about a few questions, and um, I promise everyone I'll send Sang the questions, so we will answer everyone. I want to thank you for joining us, uh, Sang. Again, thank you. It was very interesting. And I hope if I didn't anyone, too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if anyone missed anything, this webinar was being recorded and will be uploaded as always to our website. It's always good to hear it one more time. And that's it. I wish you everyone to have a good day and thank you. Thank you for Bye attending. bye everyone. Bye bye.